Hi everyone, my name is Paul Buffa. I'm the head of product education here at Observable. Today I'm gonna to talk about one of my favorite features when designing D3 visualizations called Observable Inputs. Let's check out how it works. Here I have an example of a force directed tree from the D3 gallery. It's one of my favorite visualization forms because it's perfect for graph data and they're pretty fun to play around with once you've set it up. If I scroll down below to see the code for this graph, you'll see there's this little block of code for defining the force simulation. What this will do is, is that it'll determine the positions of the nodes and the links in my graph. You'll notice here that the strength for the force link and the force many body are hard coded in my visualization. Now, if I change those values, it'll dramatically change the layout of my graph. So if I change this to say, grid one, and scroll back up, you can see it's a very different graph than I had before. So if I want to test these out quickly and see which parameters work best, I can take out those hard-coded values and swap them with observable input. In this example here, I have forked that previous force directed tree and taken out all the hard-coded values and put in inputs for them. So an observable input is a simple HTML input that allows you to change values on the fly and see it update your visualization. So here I've got one for that link strength. And now rather than going into the code and changing values, I can just move around the slider to see how it updates my visualization. So if I make that link strength much weaker, you can see the graph gets larger, right? Because the nodes are not being pulled together as strongly as before. Or if I make that really strong, you'll see that the graph gets more bunched up. Same thing is true for the force many body strength. So if I make that weaker, the graph will get larger, sometimes go off the canvas so a little bit gets cut off or I can make it stronger to make it a little bit tighter. This could be really nice when designing D3 visualizations because it's hard to know sometimes what are the best parameters given the data set that you're working with. If you have a large data set, you might need to make the graph a little bit tighter so it all fits on the page. Or if you have a small data set, you can make the graph larger. So I've set up for a bunch of different things. So I've also set it up for the node radius size so I can make those larger. And now you can see a lot of the circles are overlapping. So maybe I should make that link strength weaker and make the force many body strength also weaker. And now, oh, now it's getting a little cut off. So you can see, you kind of have to tweak it and see what's gonna work best. Why don't we walk through quickly how it works for setting up a new input. So maybe we can swap out the hard coded value for the color of the nodes with a uh, color input so we can change them on the fly. I'm gonna click on the cell menu here and look for inputs. And you can see there's about a dozen or so different options. I'll click on the color one for a color input. We'll call this node color. And now I'll just take that variable name and replace my hard coded hex code here. And now you'll see my visualization has a nice blue color for those nodes. And whenever I change this input, it'll change my visualization as well. So this could be a really nice way, again, for designing visualizations and also working with somebody else who maybe isn't familiar with D3 code, but wants to change around the different settings and see how it updates the results. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos on how to build D3 visualizations in Observable.